What's good, Raider Nation? Today, I want to talk about Paul Gunther's defense that he ran in Cincinnati. He had so many different packages and formations and blitzes. One of the things that I saw was he would line up two guys in the A-gap all the time. And this is a fantastic play because what happens is if you were to drop him back, because of the way the offensive lines, protection and slide is called, you'll have got a guy go unblocked. I saw this happen a number of times. Paul Gunther is a straight genius when it comes to defenses and formations and disguising blitzes and whatnot. You guys have not read this Sports Illustrated article, How an NFL Defense is Built. I suggest you guys watch it. Google it. I'll put a link in the description. You guys need to check it out. Paul Gunther gives just a brief example of some of the formations he has. And he has a number of formations, a number of packages, depending on the situation. What I want to do is I want to go back to that double A, lining up those guys in the gap. And I want to show you guys exactly what happens. You guys will see that the center here points to number 57. So essentially what he's doing is saying that that is the guy that we're going to slide towards, which implies that everyone's going to take the guy towards the right of the screen, right? So for example, what's going to happen is the left tackle is going to block the furthest guy, which is the defensive end. The left guard will block 97 and the center is pointing to 57. So essentially the center is going to pick up 57. And what happens is the right guard is then responsible for number 59. Right tackle will have to pick up number 90. You guys kind of see what's happening. Everyone's sliding towards the way the center is called, but that leaves that defensive end one on one with this running back. I want to go over and actually just show you guys. Um, watch the right tackle, for example, right here. As a play starts, watch him down block or try to get in front of um, that defensive tackle number 90. Again, it's because everyone's sliding towards the right of the screen. Next, watch the center. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to slide towards the right of the screen towards 57. Now, as you guys see, the linebackers drop back in coverage. Essentially, no one is blocking that defensive end. That's all Paul Gunther lining up those guys in the A-gap. That's 100% exactly what's going to happen. You know, you'll have your slides called, and Paul Gunther understands this. If you guys look at his resume, just in the last four to five years, what he's done is fantastic. I mean, he's coached some of the top defenses. His players love him. He's a fantastic coach. What I actually want to do is I'm going to actually show you guys some of the plays that he likes to run. So essentially, a defense coordinator either loves zone or he loves man. But there is a third type of play that's called, which is called zone to man. So that is what Paul Gunther does. He's a zone to man type guy. So what that implies is they'll call a, a zone play. And when someone comes into your zone, you just pick them up and now you're, you're responsible for him. Man to man. Paul Gunther absolutely loves this. And some of the plays that I saw four to five times being called per game, I want to show you guys some of those. So the first play we're going to start with is the cover six defense because the cover six defense is unique. A lot of people don't understand it, um, but I'm going to break it down for you guys. All right. So getting back into this defense. So the cover six is very different. A lot of people think it means there's six guys in, in coverage, but it's not. Cover six is essentially a cover four and a cover two. So if you think about this, the ball is always placed on one side of the hash mark. So in this instance, on the right side of the hash mark. So what's going to happen is the shorter side of the field, the team will play a cover two. So essentially you're gonna have a, a half of the field playing a cover two. And then on the other half, you'll have the team playing a cover four. So essentially what you're doing is on the shorter side of the field, you'll have three guys. And on the other side of the field, the longer side, you'll have four guys. So the cover four and cover two, it gets the name of um, obviously four plus two is cover six. So they just call it a cover six. But it's not like there's six guys playing deep like you would see in a cover three or a cover two or even a cover four. But in the cover six, so you got three guys dropping back. Essentially, it's a cover three, but the team is rolled over for the longer side of the field. All right, here's another example of that cover six. As you guys will see, you guys have the three guys that are playing deep. The longer side is the right side of the field. So right of the left hash mark. And then you got the two guys playing deep on that side with the one safety playing deep on the shorter side of the field. Now, a cover six is a defense that I saw Paul Gunther run at least seven times a game. Keep in mind, seven out of 40 defensive plays or 50 defensive play calls, it's a pretty big amount, right? The next defense that I saw Gunther run a lot is the cover two. And obviously, every team out there runs a cover two. It's such a basic defense but it works. It, it puts that pressure on your safeties because your safeties have to cover the two deep halves of the field. 
and then it obviously allows everyone else to play underneath. So again, cover two is a very basic defense. I told you guys, Paul Gunther plays that cover two zone to man. I'll, I'll break that down just a little bit later. I just want to go over some of the defenses. Um, again, cover two is a very, very fantastic defense. Everyone runs it, but there is one problem with it. The main problem with the cover two is for the most part, your safeties are covering the most outer part of the field which will always allow a small little gap right in the middle of the field. Um, so here's Derek Carr throwing a touchdown on a cover to, again, right in the middle of the defense. Um, to counteract that, Tony Dungy created what is called the Tampa 2. I saw Paul Gunther run this play a number of times as well. I would say between four to seven times a game. Here's the play, and we'll break it down after you guys watch the play. Now, what the cover two lacks in is someone covering the middle of the field, right? So essentially right here is a cover two, right? It's just, you know, one safety has one half, one safety has the other half. Tampa two, on the other hand, actually allows the safeties to play further out and it has that linebacker drop back into the middle of the field. And it allows the other four guys to play the, the bottom, you know, the bottom quarters, right? In the bottom of the field. Um, what that does is when you have a guy go deep, if it's a regular cover two, the middle's always wide open. Well, in this instance here, you have to see that the linebacker is in the middle of the field. The quarterback, unless he's super accurate, is not going to take the chance. In this case, the quarterback throws it to the outer wide receiver, keeping in mind that that safety, because it's a Tampa two, is able to cover a further out portion of the field, and he's able to make a play on the ball. So again, that's a fantastic play, you know, switching in between the, the Tampa two, the cover two. Um, and then here, I'm gonna actually break down the cover three, but this is where the zone demand comes into play. The cover three zone of man is not that different than a normal cover three straight up zone play, right? Of course, you have the safety in the middle of the field who is going to cover the middle third. You have the bottom corner that will cover the bottom third and you have the top corner that will cover the top third. Just a typical cover three defense. And then, of course, the other player, which is the nickel corner in this this situation, he has the flats. And then on the other end, you have the linebacker who is going to cover the other flats. And then, of course, you have your two middle linebackers who are going to just cover the inside zone area right there. Um, so essentially, it's just the cover three. Now, where the zone two man comes into play is if the running back leaks out to the flats, the guy that's covering the flats will just pick that guy up and just play him man to man. And then on the other side of the field, you'll have one guy playing the flats and one guy playing the top third. Because there's two wide receivers on that side, what's going to happen is if a, one of the wide receivers goes past the flats, then that cornerback will pick him up because he's covering that deep third. So even if that receiver were to run a eight yard out route that that cornerback would have to essentially pick him up so once the receiver goes past the flats notice how 43 is standing there with no one coming his way so what 43 actually does is if you watch 43 here he's going to uh, just follow the wide receiver on the other end you have the linebacker who when the running back goes to the flats he just picks him up and then just chases him around and again if you notice the other cornerback that has the top third of the field he doesn't have anyone that goes his zone either. So the cover three zone to man, I think it's a lot better than playing straight zone. And it can be argued that it's better than man to man as well, especially if your your players are on the same page. You know, Bill Belichick plays the zone to man a lot more and for a good reason, right? Um, and I want to show you guys his next play because I find it fascinating. So um, this is a cover one man to man play, but notice how there's five down linemen. So Think about that for a second. There's five down defensive linemen. Uh, essentially, you have to have uh, good corners. But what, what's going on here is a cover one man to man. You have a deep safety covering um, just everything deep. And then you have your bottom cornerback, just straight man to man. You have your linebacker who's man to man. Now, what's fascinating here is you have these three wide receivers on the top of the screen that will be covered by these three defensive backs. And they're kind of playing zone, even though it's man to man. Um, so that top safety right there will have a receiver if he were to run an out route to the right. And then you have the slot corner who, even though he's jamming that guy, will essentially just take anyone that's running underneath. Um, so like a drag route. And then you have that other safety or, or corner that will essentially then pick up anyone that goes deep 
or or maybe even it's like a post route to the outside he kind of has to pick up whatever right but you can tell that when when these guys go in motion that no one player is assigned to anybody you'll see because there's some confusion but the safety ends up manning up that wide receiver on top and then you got these two defensive backs that are now covering the other two wide receivers now the cornerback takes his pick he takes the underneath wide receiver there's some confusion because the safety jumps that guy as well which essentially leaves the other wide receiver wide open luckily the quarterback doesn't even look that way he doesn't throw it to that guy um, but again I personally think that giving the the cornerbacks and the safeties the options of one covers the underneath one picks up uh, the top guy it's fascinating right but the best part of this play is I mean you look you got five down linemen right and the main reason to this is because it is third down they're trying to get some pressure and they do pressure the the quarterback there uh, unfortunately the quarterback gets the ball out faster due to the fact that cornerback is not able to cover that wide receiver Paul Gunther has a number of different play calls packages and schemes I've seen him mix up different packages with different linebackers and different pass rushers he'll put five down linemen in he'll play a cover one cover two Tampa two he'll play the cover three he'll go half of the defense is playing zone the other half is playing man Paul Gunther is a fantastic defensive coordinator and he's very creative there's a reason why when John Gruden wanted to hire a defensive coordinator and run the whole entire defense, he went out and got Paul Gunther. Just like Gruden, I also have a lot of faith in Gunther, and I truly believe that Gunther will have our defense turned around this year. Last year, after the Raiders got rid of Ken Norton Jr., our defense got a lot better, and part of that was because we had a change of, of um, play calling and just the scheme and the small things. In my overall opinion, I'm super excited about Gunther. I'm super excited about what he brings to our defense. I think Khalil Mack, Bruce Irvin, some of our young rookies are going to highly benefit from Gunther's play calling, his scheme, and his system. I want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions. Please like, share, and comment, and let me know what you guys think about Gunther, and subscribe if you have not subscribed. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.